Okay, it is September 14th, Saturday. I am cycle day six, and I took an LH strip uh, a little bit ago, and I'll just take a look and see what it looks like. Oops, okay. Mommy. It's still very, very dark. Uh, we'll see if it's, um, it went down a little bit yesterday, so it might be going back up, but hopefully it'll stay in this zone <laughs> until next Wednesday. I'm planning on next Wednesday being the day I either inseminate or I order the sperm to inseminate on Thursday. So um, I'll take a picture and uh, we'll see what the rest of the week looks like. Okay, it is Monday, uh, cycle day eight, and I took an LH strip at lunch. I had phone duty, so I couldn't just, you know, I couldn't really film like my normal way. Um, but I'll just tell you about it. I took an LH strip and I'll show you what it looks like. So my question is, was my urine just super diluted? But I don't think so because I mean, I feel like my morning was the same as it always is. Uh, 0.68, that is a gigantic drop. So are my new supplements working that fast? Um, I'm fasting all day today. Is that helping? I don't know, but 0.68 is ridiculous. Like in a good way. Like I'm very happy about that. Uh, being cycle day eight. Um, why was it so high just a couple of days ago? I don't know. And cycle day four is not a peak. Um, I know a lot of you might be confused, but if you watch my videos, you'll understand what these numbers mean for me being in perimenopause. So anyway, I'm excited that it is down to a 0.68. Um, I hope that I am regulating right now <laughs> somehow and that come cycle day 10, which is only two days from now, it starts to climb. But really, um, in the past, when my cycles were normal and perfect, um, I would have low, you know, low, 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 and then I would hit day 12 and just soar. So day 12 would be amazing, and to ovulate naturally on day 13 would be perfect because that would be natural and normal for my body. So anyway, uh, so that's exciting. I will see you tomorrow, cycle day nine, and see if this continues. Okay, it is Tuesday, September 17th, and uh, today I am cycle day nine. So it's kind of exciting because now I'm actually getting closer to uh, hopefully ovulating and not missing it. <clears throat> I believe I'll ovulate, but will I miss it? Will I get sperm here in time? So I've never had a problem ovulating. And uh, the reason I was taking Letrozole uh, for the past several months was because I wanted to stop ovulation. Because, uh, because I'm in perimenopause, my ovulation was getting uh, sooner and sooner, uh, too close to uh, being too early. It was getting around cycle day nine. And my perfect day is uh, cycle day 13. So I uh, cycled day 13 my entire young adult life and had uh, <clears throat> a full life of fertility that went unused because I was not married. Anyway, um, <laughs> because I was not married. And uh, it's, it's, it's hard to, to know that and you know, there's nothing I could do about it. I wasn't in the position to be a single mother. I did not have a good enough job. I did not have medical insurance and I just not, I would not have been able to afford being a single mother by choice, which a lot of people are doing now. I would not have been able to, I mean, I could have been a single mother, but I would have been living at my parents' house and they would have been taking care of both of us. Anyway, um, so I took an LH strip and uh, it's from Easy at Home. I'm gonna see what it looks like. Yesterday, it dropped way down to 0.68. I couldn't believe that. So here I am, cycle day nine. Not sure what I want. I don't want a positive, that's for sure. 
but uh, I don't know. I don't want it to be too low either since I really hope I'm going to get a surge on cycle day 11 or 12. So let's see what happens here. almost thought it was a die stealer. Um, it's very, very dark. Okay. Well, I'm feeling a lot of activity in my ovaries and I had a pretty low temperature this morning of 96.93. So, uh, if my temperature goes up to the twenties or thirties tomorrow, I'm going to have the donor send shipment tomorrow to receive on Thursday. Because I, I ovulated on cycle day 11 for like a year and a half when I lived up in uh, New England. So, you know, it, it, cycle day 11 became my norm when I was up there. And so, okay, well, um, and better to have it in a day or two and waiting for the egg rather than inseminate too late when my egg dies. So anyway... <laughs> Um, yeah, so cycle day nine, um, getting closer. I'll take a picture of this and we'll see what the app gives it. Okay, so 1.05, so it is climbing again. So, all right, uh, yeah, cycle day four was 1.02, then it dropped down a little bit. Here I am cycle day nine and I am back up to 1.05. Uh, so yeah, um, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Also, I want to let you know what happened with the egg donor. Um, I was in line for another girl and I was actually second on the waiting list and they were going to say, let's find out what's going on with the recipient ahead of you. She may decline and then uh, you'll be number one. Well, I thought to myself, yikes, I'm not ready to be number one yet because, you know, I got to scrounge up $300 for the matching. And then I realized, uh, where am I going to get $1,200 for the sperm? Because the sperm prices right now are outrageous. And I can't pick any sperm donor I want. Uh, it has to be in their list, which they have a ton of them. But you go to those websites and they're all averaging over $1,000 a piece. I forgot about that, like $1,200 to get one little tiny vial shipped to Syracuse, New York is where the egg retrieval is going to be. Well, anyway, so I thought that was the worst of my worries. Uh, come to find out, they did not tell me this in my consultation. She went over the packages with me, how much things cost. And I thought, well, it'll be manageable uh, under a tree uh, under a payment plan well they did not tell me this in the consultation but in the message sent to me yesterday she said that she named all these prices of shipping and this and that and the other and also said that <clears throat> uh, they require a 25 percent down payment of the uh, IVF treatment um, prior to beginning. So, uh, it's, it's about a $10,000 IVF package. And so that's $2,500. So $2,500 plus the $300 plus the $1,250, uh, sperm from Seattle Sperm Bank. And they want all that. And it, it's, it's all got to be upfront. Well, I don't have that. So and she said, you have 48 hours to respond. Can you believe that? I have 48 hours to respond. I have to have a almost $4,000 and I have to respond within 48 hours or I am cut. So, um, sounds really harsh and hard, doesn't it? So I wrote back to her. I said, this is not affordable. And when they pride themselves on being affordable and, uh, just coughing up all that money up front like right away, you know, and I understand, I, I've been to other clinics and I know that they're $20,000. I know that. I've been there and I did that and I paid, I paid a lot of money for nothing, for a whole lot of nothing. You watched my channel, my fertility story, you know that um, I did IVF at two different places. So anyway, um, so it's very disappointing. I, I was pretty depressed yesterday. I was really, I was excited about it. I was looking forward to it. 
Um, I'm still having hope and faith that God can give me a miracle egg. But uh, after five years of believing that and praying for that and it not happening, um, I was ready to move on to this. And so um, I'm very disappointed and it's, a, it's upsetting. And you know, it, it doesn't mean that I'm out. I just need to figure out how to save for it in the next couple of months. And I can keep trying this way until then but um, it's just very disappointing. So anyway, that's my egg donor program update. Okay, it is September 18th and it is Wednesday. I took an LH strip and it has been uh, developing for a while, so it should be ready. And I'm gonna take a look and see, it is cycle day 10. Okay, so it has, it's still pretty dark, but I think it has backed off a little bit. And uh, what happened was I was having symptoms yesterday that made me message the donor and say, can you send a shipment today to receive tomorrow, which would be today. And he gave me a thumbs up and I just cannot believe how he is ready to go at any time. Like, I just, I can't believe that he, you know, he has to stop what he's doing throughout his day and he's got a career. I, I'm not sure what he does for a living. I have a suspicion, but, um, you know, to just kind of drop everything to, to do that is insane. And he's just awesome. I can't believe it. So anyway, I got the shipment today at about 12 o'clock. I came home on my lunch break and inseminated. So I am all done with that and I am headed back to work. So, um, and I had a major stab in my left ovary this morning. And I think that that may have been my ovulation. And so uh, I am calling today ovulation day and we'll see what my temperatures do in the next day or two. But uh, I'm excited. I'm glad that I moved on the instinct that I was having yesterday. So I went ahead and did that and I'm so glad I did. That's it for this ovulation insemination. That completes my ovulation video. I'm excited tomorrow will be 1DPO and I will see you all next week uh, for pregnancy testing. So wish me luck and pray for me please. And I will see you next week. Bye.